Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. Now, after seeing the thumbnail for this episode and reading the title, some of you might have some thoughts. One of those might be, A 300 card deck is illegal. This is madness. So I'm here to tell you that yes, this deck is 100% illegal in Commander, but it's not madness. This is Sparta! <clears throat> okay, no, it, it's not Sparta, but uh, y you get the movie reference. Yeah, this is just a fun concept for a deck, and no, you're not being forced to play it or play against it. Having a deck with more than 100 cards is completely illegal. <clears throat> uh, except, uh, I, mean, I guess if you have a companion, because for whatever reason, Th that's that's allowed weird rules aside again you're not being forced to play with or against this deck but if you do want to play this deck make sure you talk with your play group or those at your table ahead of time obviously they're gonna notice that your deck is three times as large as a normal deck should be so yeah make sure you discuss that and make sure everyone's fine with it regardless you might know from the thumbnail but let's jump into why this many cards and what this deck wants to do and one more thing real quick that I probably should have mentioned earlier, every single card in this deck, except for the commander, which is very close to the budget restriction, is less than $1. This deck completely revolves around a singular card, and that card is, of course, the Golden Pig of this deck. The Golden Pig is the number one card out of our 99, and you might have guessed it, or you might have read it in the thumbnail, but the Golden Pig for this deck is, of course, Battle of Wits. Battle of Wits is an enchantment for three blue blue, and it says at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 200 or more cards in your library, you win the game. Now, this card is not banned, but literally sees no play in Commander because it does not work in Commander. Again, typically. We just have to bend the max deck size rule slightly, okay, a little more than slightly, to actually get to that amount. And again, many playgroups and many players are okay with you doing that if you ask ahead of time. But again, if someone's not okay with that, don't get upset and play a different deck, okay? Now, you might have wondered why I picked 300 cards instead of, say, 250 or 220 or whatnot, which you could definitely win with. Uh, the answer is I just thought it would be fun to do a 300 card deck, okay? That, that's honestly the answer. And then also the, the 300 Sparta joke too, okay? Also, I just pictured it being more funny seeing a 300 card deck at a table being obnoxiously large and three times bigger than every other deck. So yeah, there's that too. Regardless, Battle of Wits needs to get in play and then stick around until your next upkeep for you to actually win. And with it being one out of 300, or should I say 299 cards in your deck, not including the commander, it's gonna be very unlikely that you draw into this. So how exactly are we gonna get this out and win? Well, now it's time for me to introduce you to the lovely commander for this deck, and one that works perfectly with Battle of Wits, and that, of course, would be... Iluna Apex of Wishes. Iluna is a 6-6 beast elemental dinosaur, because that's a thing that costs 2 green, blue, red, and it's got Flample. Or, in other words, Flying and Trample. Regardless, it also has, whenever this creature mutates, exile cards in the top of your library into exile a non-land permanent card, put that card onto the battlefield or into your hand. So when this mutates onto a non-human creature, it's kind of like cascading. You just keep revealing cards off the top of your library until you reveal a non-land permanent card, and then that goes into play or in your hand. In this case, obviously, we want directly in play. Now, to do that, we literally need to make this deck have no other non-land permanent cards other than Battle of Wits. And that's exactly what I did. Every single card in this deck outside of our lands and Battle of Wits is either an instant or a sorcery. 
So I hope you're ready for a magical adventure where I go through more cards in a single episode than I ever have. At least I'm pretty sure. Because again, this is like three times as many non-land cards. So here we go. Let's jump into it. First off, since we can't run any creatures in this deck and we need Aluna to mutate onto a creature, well, we're gonna need to make creature tokens with things like Chatter the Squirrel, Heart Evidence, and Satyr's Cunning. Now again, like I mentioned, there are an absurd amount of cards that I need to go through, so I'm gonna do these very quickly and just a very high level of each card, so if I don't get into all the details of a card, like, you know, if it's got flashback or escape, that's okay. Each of these makes one creature token, one of them being a squirrel, one being a crab, and one being a satyr. Next up, we've got Vitality Charm, which can make us an Insect, Sprout, and Sprout Swarm, which both make us a Sapperling Token, not a Sprout. Next up, there's Sound the Calm, which gives us a Wolf, Make Mischief, which gives us a Devil, and Invade the City, which lets us amass X for X of the number of instant sorceries in our graveyard, and yes, amassing is basically making a Zombie Army Token. Again, it really doesn't matter what any of these token creature types are, as long as they're not human, because again, when we mutate, it can't be onto a human for whatever reason. So that's just how it is. Next up, we've got three cards that can make us an elephant with Call the Herd, Elephant Ambush, and Trumpeting Herd. And then we've got Serpentine Curve, which makes us a Fractal, Relentless Advance, which again, amasses for three, and Experimental Overload, which gives us an XX blue and red weird creature token, whatever a weird is. Again, doesn't matter, it works for Mutate. Next up, there's Bayloth Cage Trap, which does not make us a Bayloth, but it does make us a Beast. And then Reach of Branches makes us a Tree Falk Shaman, and Pact of the Titan does not make us a Titan, because for whatever reason, that's not a creature type in Magic, even though I think it should be, it makes us a Giant. We've also got some X Spells that can make us a Token with Slime Molding, which makes us a news, and Fractal Summoning, which obviously makes us a Fractal. Next up, we've got ways to make multiple tokens with Kranko's Command, Dragon Fodder, and Forbidden Friendship. Kranko's Command and Dragon Fodder each give us two goblins, and Forbidden Friendship makes us a dinosaur and a human. And again, make sure you don't try to mutate onto the human because you can't. Next up, a way to not make a human comes with Sapperling Migration, which gives us two Sapperlings. And then Sasuke Summons gives us two snakes, and Goblin Gathering gives us two goblins. Next up, there's Pulse the Tangle, which gives us a 3-3 Beast, and it can come back to our hand so we can cast it again, and Molten Birth can do the exact same thing if we flip a coin correctly, and we get two Red Elementals when we cast that one. And then Mog Alarm is also going to give us two Goblins, and we can actually sacrifice Mountains to cast it, though we're probably not going to do that a lot of the time, it's an option. Then we've got Guilt Leaf Ambush, which makes us two Elf Warriors. And you see a pair of Goblins, uh, of course, gives us two Goblins, that'd be a pair of Goblins. Get it? And then Talren's Invocation gives us two Drakes, because again, Talren makes Drakes, but we can't have Talren in this deck. Next up, Dwarven Reinforcements, of course, makes us Dwarves. Carry and Call makes us Insects, and Dance with Devils makes us Devils. Moving on, we've got Goblin Wizardry, which makes us Goblin Wizards. Go figure. And then Flurry of Horns is going to make us two Minotaurs. Next up, we've got Horling Outburst, which makes us three Goblins. Hunting Tribe, which makes us three Elf Warriors. And Goblin War Party, which makes us three Goblins. I... Looking back on this, I probably should have switched the order of these so it's easier to say, but I'm not going to change it now. Okay, anyways. Next up, we've got Spore Swarm and Scatter the Seeds, which each make us three Sapperlings. Then we've got some variable token makers with Spore Burst, Predator's Howl, and Fertile Imagination. Spore Burst makes us a Sapperling based on the number of basic land types that we control. Predator's Howl is going to make us a Wolf or three Wolves if something died this turn. And then Fertile Imagination says choose a card type, target opponent reveals their hand, put two Sapperlings into play for each card of the chosen type revealed this way. Next up we've got two Storm token generators with Chatterstorm and Empty the Wards. Chatterstorm makes Squirrels and Empty the Wards makes Goblins. Next up, we've got some X spells with Sweep the Skies and Gelatinous Genesis. Sweep the Skies makes a 1 1 Thopter for each color of mana spent to cast this spell. And Gelatinous Genesis is going to make us XXX Green Ooze Creature Tokens. But we also can have our opponents help us with making a token with things like Theoretical Duplication in Mythos of Aluna. Theoretical Duplication says whenever a non token creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control this turn, create a token that's a copy of that creature. And then Mythos of Aluna is going to give us a copy of Target Permanent. So again, if we need a creature, we copy a creature. Next up, we've got some somewhat flexible spells that can make us a token with Assault and Battery, Verdant Command, and Multiple Choice. Assault's gonna deal 2 damage to our creature or player, and Battery's gonna make us an Elephant. Verdant Command can make us 2 Squirrels, Counter-Target Loyalty Ability of a Planeswalker, Exile a card from a Graveyard, or make target player gain 3 life. 
And then multiple choice basically has us pay X, and then we get certain effects based on that X value, and if X is 3, we're getting a 4-4 four, four blue and red elemental creature token. Next up, we've got Callous Dismissal, which is going to bounce a non-land permanent back to its owner's hand, and it lets us amass 1. And speaking of bouncing, they're stolen by the Fae, which lets us bounce a creature and make fairies. And then Spawning Breath can ping something for 1 and give us an Eldrazi. Next up, there's Artifact Mutation, which lets us destroy an artifact to get Saprolings. And then Release the Gremlins has us destroy multiple artifacts to get multiple gremlins. Next up, Containment Breach is going to destroy target artifact or enchantment, and if its mana value is 2 or less, we get a Pest. And then we've got Gross Spasm, Call of Science, and Adverse Conditions, which each make us Eldrazi spawn or science. Gross Spasm is going to ramp us by a land, Call of Science gives us 2 Eldrazi science, and Adverse Conditions is going to tap down 2 target creatures. Next up, there's Honor the God Pharaoh, which lets us discard a card to draw 2 cards and amass 1. And then Sprouting Renewal either gives us a 2-2 Elf Knight, or lets us destroy target artifact or enchantment. Next up, there's Illuminate History, which has us discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards, and if there are 7 or more cards in our graveyard, we get a 3-2 Spirit. Moving on, there's Inscription of Insight, which has a lot of options, but if we want a token, we can get an XX Blue Illusion equal to the number of cards in our hand. Next up, there's Aether Mutation, which bounces a creature and gives us a number of saplings based on its converted mana cost. And then Last Step Plating is going to have us amass 1 and give us and our permanents Hexproof until end of turn, so it can protect things like Battle of Wits. Speaking of which, there's Abtruce Interference, which counter-targets spell as its controller pays 1 and gives us an Eldrazi Scion. Finally, we've got Geist Snatch and Summoner's Bane, each of which counter target spell and give us an illusion, one of which is a 1-1 and one is a 2-2. Okay, that was quite a few token generating cards, and obviously we need quite a bit because we basically need to guarantee that we can get a token and we can get that mutate onto the token to actually get things going. But after we do that and mutate onto it and get Battle of Wits out, how exactly do we protect Battle of Wits to make sure that we can get to our upkeep and win? We, of course, are going to be running an absurd number of counter spells. Abjure makes us sacrifice a blue permanent to counter target spell. Dispel is going to counter target instant spell, and Turn Aside is going to counter target spell that targets a permanent we control. Just a quick note you need to be careful on when you actually decide to mutate and get Battle of Wits out. Obviously, your opponents are going to be trying to get rid of it, so make sure you've got some backup plans. So, of course, a lot of low to the ground counter spells like these can be very helpful. So, we're also going to be running Spell Pierce, which can counter a non creature spell unless its controller pays two. Dwari Disruption counters any spell unless its controller pays one. And Is a Charm has a lot of options and one is basically a spell pierce. Next up, there's Miscalculation, which counters any spell lets its controller pays two. And then Mana Lake is the same, but it's three instead of two. And then Unsubstantiate is going to return target spell or creature to its owner's hand. So this one's actually really flexible, and we'll talk about other bounce spells here in a bit, I promise. But first, let's continue with the counter spells with Keep Safe, Negate, and Saw It Coming. Keep Safe's going to counter target spell targets a permanent we control, and it's going to draw us a card. Negate's going to counter target non-creature spell, and Saw It Coming counters any spell, and it's got a foretell cost. Next up, there's Supreme Will, which either lets us counter a spell as its controller pays three, or lets us get a card off the top of our library. And then you find the villain's lair can counter target spell, or draw us two cards, then discard two cards. Foil is actually a counter spell that we can cast for free if we discard an island and another card rather than paying its cost. Next up, we've got Thassa's Intervention, which either lets us look at the top X cards of our library and then put two of them into our hand, the rest of the bottom of our library in a random order, or we can counter target spell and lets the controller pays twice X. We've also got Om's Veil, though, which makes our spells uncounterable by blue or black spells this turn. And then Simic Charm gives us some options, but one of them is to give our permanents we control Hexproof until the end of turn. Next up, we're going to be running a lot of bounce spells in this deck, like Void Snare, Retraction Helix, and Banishing Neck. First off, bouncing our opponent's things can definitely save us in a lot of situations. But also, if we have an instant speed bounce spell, bouncing Battle of Wits back to our hand can save it too, and then we can cast it another time. Or if Battle of Wits is dealt with, but we don't have a way to recur it, but we can shuffle it into our library, we can bounce a Luna back to our hand. And then mutate again to get Battle of Wits back. Again, bounce spells in this deck can be very flexible. Anyways, Void Snare is going to bounce target non-land permanent, but at sorcery speed. And then Retraction, Helix, and Banishing Knack each do the exact same thing. They say, until end of turn, target creature gains tap, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So now our tokens, or our commander, can help us bounce something back. And then we've got Blink of an Eye, Into the Royal, and Compelling Deterrence, which can each bounce target non-land permanent. On top of that, Blink of an Eye and Into the Royal can draw us a card if they're kicked, and Compelling Deterrence can make a player discard a card if we control a zombie, and yes, we can control zombies because of a mess. Next up, there's Boomerang and Eye of Nowhere, which can bounce any target permanent, and Depart the Realm can bounce any target non-land permanent, and it's got a foretell cost of a blue. 
And then we've got Disperse, Echoing Truth, and Expel from Raska. Disperse can bounce target non-land permanent, Echoing Truth can bounce target non-land permanent, and everything else has the exact same name as it. And then Expel from Raska can either bounce a non-land permanent back to its owner's hand, or if we've got the City's Blessing, we can put that permanent on top of its owner's library instead. And then Winds of Rebuke bounces target non-land permanent, and it mills everyone for two. And then you come to a river has two options, but the one that we're pretty much always going to choose is to bounce target non-land permanent. Speaking of options, there's Quandrix Command, which says choose two. Return target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand, counter target artifact or enchantment spell, put two plus plus one counters on target creature, target player shovels up to three target cards from their graveyard into their library. So yes, a lot of these options can help us in a lot of situations. And finally, our last two bounce spells are Rescind and Wipe Away. Rescind can return target permanent to its owner's hand, or we can cycle it for two. And then Wipe Away bounces target permanent, and it's got split second. Now if we get Battle of Wits out, and we can't protect it or save it, how exactly do we get it back? Well, we've got plenty of ways to do so, so let's start off by talking about Regrowth, Recollect, and You Happen on a Glade. Both Regrowth and Recollect do the exact same thing, they return target card from our graveyard to our hand. Then You Happen Upon a Glade has two options, we can either search our library for two basic lands, put them into our hand, or we can return target permanent card from our graveyard to our hand. Next up there's Elven Cash, which is going to return target card from our graveyard to our hand, and Woodland Guidance is going to do the exact same thing, but if we clash with opponent and win, we get to untap all of our forests. Next up there's Once in Future, which can return target card from our graveyard to our hand, and one on top of our library, or we get both into our hand if we paid three green into it. And speaking of getting back multiple things, we've got Healing Technique, Restock, and Seeds Renewal. Healing Technique has Demonstrate, and it's got Return Tar Card from your graveyard to your hand, you gain life go to its mana value. And then Restock and Seeds Renewal just simply get us back two cards. Next up, there's All Suns Dawn, which for this deck's purposes can get us back up to three cards. And then we've got some X Recursion Spells with Recall and Wildest Dreams. Both well, are going to get us X cards from our graveyard back to our hand, but with Recall, we have to discard X cards too. Next up, there's Clear the Mind, which is going to make target players shuffle their graveyard into their library and draw a card. Again, by shuffling it into our library, we can easily get it back with our commander if we bounce our commander back to our hand. Now, of course, to get to all these great spells, we need to dig through our deck to do so, so let's talk about things like Faithless Looting, Thrill Possibility, and Tormenting Voice. Faithless Looting has us draw two, then discard two, and Thrill Possibility and Tormenting Voice have us discard one to draw two. Next up, this Cathartic Reunion, which makes us discard two to draw three. And then Compulsive Research has us draw three to discard two, unless we discard a land. Next up, there's Frantic Search, which has us draw two, discard two, and untap up to three lands. Next up, there's Pulse the Grid, which lets us draw two and discard a card from our hand. Then if an opponent has more cards than us, we get this card back. And then Salon Division gets us an instant or sorcery off the top six of our library. Next up, a whole multiverse has Foretell for one and a blue and lets us scry two, then draw two. Moving on, we've got Chemister's Insight, which has us draw two and it's got Jumpstart. Hieroglyphic Illumination, which has us draw two and it's got Cycling. And Factor Fiction, which, well, does what Factor Fiction does. Reveal the top five, an opponent separates those into two piles, and we get one of those piles. Next up, Careful Consideration has us draw four, then discard three. But if we cast it during our main phase, it's only discarding two. And then Reign of Revelation has us draw three and only discard one. Next up, there's Deep Analysis, which has target player draw two cards and we can flash it back. But we're still not done yet because next up, we've got Concentrate and Harmonize, each which do the exact same thing. They have us draw three cards. And of course, we've got some X draw spells as well with Epiphany of the Drown Yard, Read the Runes, and Mind Spring. Epiphany of the Drown Yard is basically a reverse factor fiction, but for X plus one. Read the Runes has us draw X cards and then discard a card for each card drawn unless we sacrifice a permanent. And then Mind Spring just straight up has us draw X cards. Next up, we even have some tutors that can help us out with Dizzy Spell and Fervent Mastery. Dizzy Spell has Transmute for one blue blue, so basically we can discard this, then go get any card in our deck that has a converted mana cost of one. So whether we need a counter spell or a bounce spell or a recursion spell, we've got options. And then Fervent Mastery lets us search a library for up to three cards, put them into our hand, shuffle them, and discard three cards at random. So this is risky, but we can usually at least keep one thing that we wanted. But now that we've talked about actually getting to the pieces that we need to win, how do we get there more quickly? First up, let's talk about some draw spells that can also help us ramp with Explore, Grow Spiral, and Eureka Moment. Both Explore and Grow Spiral let us get an extra land into play and draw a card. And then Eureka Moment does the exact same thing, but we draw two cards. Next up, there's Urban Evolution, which is the biggest of these kind of effects. We draw three and get an extra land into play. And then for some straight up ramp spells, we've got Search for Tomorrow, Rampant Growth, and Edge of Autumn. Search for Tomorrow gets us a basic skin to play untapped, and Rampant Growth and Edge of Autumn gets a basic skin to play tap. And speaking of getting a basic skin to play tap, we've got Beneath the Sands, Road, and Natural Connection, which each do that exact same thing. 
Up next, we've got Harrow, Roiling Regrowth, and Cultivate, which can let us get two basics. Harrow makes a sacrifice one land to get those two basics into play, untapped, and Roiling Regrowth does the exact same thing, but those basics come into play tapped. And then Cultivate gets us one basic into play tapped, and the other we get goes into our hand. Next up, there's Deep Reconnaissance, which gets a basic into play tapped, and it's got Flashback. And then Grow from the Ashes gets us one basic into play untapped, or two if we kicked it. Far Wanderings gets us one basic into play tapped, or three if we've got Threshold. Next up, there's Primal Growth, which lets us get one basic into play untapped, or two if we sacrifice a creature to kick it. And speaking of two lands, we've got Migration Path, Circuitous Route, and Vastwood Surge, which each get us two basics into play tapped. On top of that, Migration Path has Cycling for two, Circuitous Route can actually get us Gates instead, and Vastwood Surge has Kicker, and if we do that, then we get a lot of tokens on our creatures, but we really don't need to ever do that. We also have some temporary ramp that can really help us out with Strike It Rich, Sudden Breakthrough, and you find a Cursed Idol. Strike It Rich is going to give us a treasure token, and it's got flashbacks. Sudden Breakthrough is going to pump a creature and give us a treasure token, and you find a Cursed Idol gives us some options. We can either destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or create a treasure token and venture into the dungeon. And then Crack Open lets us destroy target artifact or enchantment and create a treasure token. Next up, there's Depth of the Desire, which lets us bounce a creature and get a treasure token. And then Improvised Weaponry hits something for two and makes us a treasure token. Moving on, there's Pirate's Prize, which has us draw two cards that make a treasure token. And then Smashing Success is going to destroy target artifact or land, and if we destroy an artifact, we get a treasure. We can get multiple treasure with Unexpected Windfall, which has us discard a card to draw two and get two treasure. And finally, we've got some spells that might appear pretty big, but we can actually just pay Is It Is It to discard them and get a treasure token. Again, although treasure tokens are temporary ramp, they can really help us get to our win quicker. But now that we've gone through every single non-land card in this deck, and again, there was a ton of them, let's move on to the price. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, every single card in this deck outside of the commander, which is actually just two cents away, is less than one dollar. So as you can see, considering that this deck has 300 cards in it, three times the normal amount, it is pretty budget friendly at $66.15. I mean, again, if you just divide that by three, it's like $22 per every 100 cards. So yeah, pretty budget, all things considered. Also keep in mind that this estimate is including basic lands at 10 cents a piece. So if you've got the basics already, you're gonna be having a lot of savings. On top of that, also keep in mind that this price does not include heavily played or damaged cards. So if you're buying those on TCG Player, it can be even cheaper. But also make sure that you keep in mind that this cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending on where you live. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.